Okay, so for isobaric expansion, uh, in some sense, it's, a, it's probably the most complicated one in the sense that none of these quantities are zero. <laughs> in isobaric expansion, there is a heat transfer, there is work done, and there is non-zero change in internal energy. So you're just going to have to work it all out. One thing that does simplify a little bit is because, you know, isobaric means pressure is constant. So that does simplify the work done as not, you know, that infinitesimal work done, but just simply pressure times the change in volume. You can do that because this pressure is constant. So I have this constant pressure. I can just multiply it to this change of volume to get my work done. Let me, uh, let me actually do that so that I get W as a numerical quantity early on. Um, so that's going to be uh, my pressure, uh, 360 times 10 to the power of 3 because it's kilopascal times the difference is uh, 0 0.31, uh, 0 0.31 cubic meter. That's basic SI unit. Yeah. So you get 111,600 joule. And oh, let me kind of be fancy here. <laughs> It, that should be acceptable <laughs> um, using the E notation for scientific notation. Um, so good, that's the work done. So uh, that's uh, probably the simplest thing in isobaric expansion. Um, I think I can find the, the change in internal energy the same way. I think I can find the change in internal energy the same way I did it before using the expression from equipartition theorem that degree of freedom over two and KB change of temperature and thinking about ideal gas law, PV equals NKBT, and this kind of ends up being D over two, oops, not in K separately, but D over two times change of pressure times volume. And in this case, um, pressure doesn't change. So for this particular case, it ends up being D over two times pressure times change in volume. So, oh, I think I already calculated this. That was the work done. So, oh, maybe I can just multiply that to D over two to get uh, my change in internal energy. So uh, it's a diatomic ideal gas. So degree of freedom should be five. So times five divided by two. So that should be changing internal energy to 79,000. And this is what I was referring to that um, the most common way you will find the heat is by using first law of thermodynamics, which says, which relates these three exact dynamical quantities together. Change in internal energy is heat transfer minus work done or work done by the system, or heat transfer into the system is changing internal energy plus the work done by the system. I hope this makes intuitive sense um, that when the system is doing work, that's transferring energy from the system to outside. So uh, when you are trying to figure out how much heat had to come in, that amount adds. So, um, Add the two, can I do that in my head? I don't know. Uh, 3.906 E5, I think. Um, <laughs> we'll see if it says it that's wrong. <laughs> All right, that's right. Um, okay, so I did isochoric, isobaric, and I'm looking for isothermal and adiabatic processes. So let's find those and do those remaining two. <laughs> 